Good day. My name is B. Graham Simpson. In 2016, I retired from a Fortune 200 corporation as Senior Editor Writing Advisor and am now the CEO and Editor-in-Chief of Behold Writers Editing and Publishing Services, LLC. We are a minority-owned, woman-owned small business based in Prince George's County, Maryland. I have authored, co-authored, or edited more than 20 books, but today my focus will be on these two. Behold ye writers for the Lord and doing the right thing. I am presenting this video as part of the Right Women Book Fest 2020. For information about events and to shop for books and poetry by other women authors, go to www.therightwomen.com bookfest.org. Again, my name is B. Graham Simpson, and today I'm presenting What's in Your Book? What's in Your Book? But first, allow me to say a word about my two babies. Behold Ye Writers for the Lord is the workbook that I use for my book birth writing workshop. However, it contains much more than I teach in those workshops. In it, you'll learn some of the basics of writing and publishing a nonfiction book with an emphasis on writing your story. And if you want to develop an excellent outline for your book, no matter what type of book you're writing, you'll find that Behold Ye Writers for the Lord is a beneficial tool. In doing the right thing, a 26-week writing journal, I give you opportunities to stretch your writing muscles. Each week, I assign a task that will get you in the habit of writing every day for the purpose of creating material for you to expand your writing project through self-examination, research, or interviews. These are my books, my babies, birth out of a willingness to help you write your book. So let's talk about your book and what's in your book. I ask the question, what's in your book to writers who have an idea and don't know where to go from that point, <coughs> excuse me, to writers who have started writing and can't seem to finish, and to writers who want to write but don't know what they should write about. So I ask the question, who is the Y-O-U in your? Raise your hand if you have written a book or written a chapter in a book. If you have written a book or written a chapter in a book, you are in group one visionaries. Write that down, group one visionaries. You have written a book or written a chapter in a book. Next. Raise your hands if you have actually started writing a book. Anybody? You are in group two, and I'll call you creators. So group two, you are creators if you have actually started writing a book. And yes, it's possible, it's possible to be in two groups. So write down each group that applies to you. For example, you may have written a book and started writing a new book. In that case, you're in Group one visionaries, as well as group two creators. Now, raise your hands if you have an idea for a book, but don't know where to start. Anybody? You have an idea for a book, but don't know where to start. You're in group three, thinkers. Group three, thinkers. You have an idea for a book, but don't know where to start. Lastly, Raise your hands if you want to write but don't have an idea for a book or you're thinking, I'm not a writer. Anybody fall into that group? If you want to write but don't have an idea for a book or you're thinking, I'm not a writer, you're in group four, hopeful. Group four, hopeful. So let's just recap. Group one, visionaries. You have written a book or written a chapter in a book. Group two, creators, you have actually started writing a book. Group three, thinkers, you have an idea for a book but don't know where to start. 
or group four, hopeful. You want to write, but you don't have an idea for a book, or you're thinking, I'm not really a writer. Remember what group you're in. Just a word to group four, hopeful. You want to write a book, but you don't have an idea for a book, or you're thinking, I'm not a writer. You are more of a writer than you think. Writing is just using words on paper or in some other media. If you use words, you can write, you can create. We create with our words, just as God created the universe with his words. Writing is for everybody, more than just for an elite few or for pastors or for the super smart. Everyone can write. It's just that everyone will need an editor. I am an editor myself, and when I write my books, I definitely hire an editor. When you visit BeholdWriters.org, you'll find that each of the packages that Behold Writers Editing and Publishing Services offers includes editing. So, let's talk about your book. We've identified the Y-O-U in your. You are visionaries, creators, thinkers, and or hopeful. So what's in your book? In other words, each of us has a book in us. Our lives are our books. If we are living, we are booking, if you will. To share our books or our lives so others may benefit from our knowledge or experiences, we need to write it down. I ask again, what's in your book? Imagine that this is your book. It will have your title and your name on it, but it's your book. So let's just see what's in your book. First of all, I see a glove. Let me just put your book down for a minute. But I see a glove. This glove represents what you've done and what's been done to you. What you've done and or what's been done to you. This could include your experiences or your relationships or the people you've encountered. How have you treated others? How have uh, others treated you? What about your ministry? It's all in your book. And what you've done can be beneficial, unbeneficial, pleasant or unpleasant. In other words, the good, the bad and the ugly. I don't like to use that phrase because it's so overused. So I ask you again, what have you done? That's remarkable. What have you been wrong about? And it took you years to realize you were wrong about it. What are your favorite hobbies? Next, what is in your book? What else is in your book? This shoe this is in your book. And it represents the places you have been. The places you have been. It could be a pleasant walk through the park as a child. A car trip. Being locked in a closet by a naughty cousin. Again, the places you have been could have been beneficial or unbeneficial. Pleasant or unpleasant. But it's all in your book. So I ask you, what exciting places have you visited? Where have you gotten into the most trouble, had the most fun, or received the greatest illumination about yourself? It's all in your book. What else is in your book? I find in your book these glasses. These glasses represent what you have seen. And throughout our lives, we see a lot. And we see with more than just our eyes. We see with our thoughts, we see in our spirit. God gives us witty ideas and the power to get wealth. Your dreams, your ideas, your visions, your fears, they're all in your book. So I ask you, what are the biggest problems in the world and how do they impact us today? What are the problems in the world that nobody is paying attention to? Write about them. It could be in your book. So what else is in your book? I find now this watch. This watch represents time. 
Your time is your life. Life is time. How have you spent your time? Many of us have 20, 30, 40, 50 or more years of time to write about. And you can write about it whether or not in your opinion or another's opinion, it has proven beneficial or unbeneficial, pleasant or unpleasant. Because there is something to be learned from every experience. And if you can help others to avoid something unpleasant, then it's, it was worth it. Put it in your book. So I ask you the question, what is the most upsetting experience you've ever had? What disturbs you the most? Who are the people who have had the greatest impact on your life? When were your morals compromised and how did it affect your life? How have your morals and values changed as you've matured? What is the biggest value in your life? Put it in your book. So what else is in your book? What? I see this big pencil. This big pencil represents the effort that it will take to write your book. You're going to have to work, to push, in order to get your ideas out of your head, out of limbo, out of the conceptual phase, and into the hands of readers, into the hands of book buyers. So far, I've really only been talking about the big picture, the idea or concept for your book. I conduct writing workshops called Book Birth, during which I compare writing a book to giving birth. Writing requires work. In consulting with some prospective authors, I discovered that sometimes the idea of a book is greater than the effort of writing the book to get to the visionary group, hopefuls, you'll have to use the big pencil, the big effort, and just sit down and write. So I ask you, do you have a designated time and place to write? How do you deal with writer's block? Who is your target audience for your book? Do you have a working outline from which to write and are you sticking to it? How are you handling distractions to your writing? Are you in the habit of writing every day? These are just some of the issues you must face during your writing journal. And these are issues that my two babies here can help you with. Finally, what else is in your book? I find this. I call it the big check. It's a big check and this big check represents your finances. In 1998, my husband and I invested over $2,000 in publishing my first book because we believed in me and in what God had inspired me to do. That couple of thousands of dollars turned into several thousand dollars, which was a greater return on our investment than any bank would or could have given. Writing is an investment in yourself, whether it's time, money, or other resources. So, how can my two babies help you? Let's uh, go back to the, to the groups. Group one, visionaries. Those of you who have written a book or written a chapter in a book, it's time for your next book. I told one of my visionary clients, if you can write a chapter in a collaborative book, you can write your own book. And she did. So for visionaries, behold ye writers for the Lord and doing the right thing writing journal will help you. Group two, creators. Those who have actually started writing a book. Again, Behold Ye Writers for the Lord, Workbook, and Doing the Right Thing Writing Journal can help you. Group three, thinkers, those who have an idea for a book but don't know where to start. Behold Ye Writers for the Lord, 
and doing the right thing writing journal can help you also. And group four, hopeful. Those who want to write but don't have an idea for a book or you're not sure you're a writer. Behold ye writers for the Lord will teach you some of the basics of writing and publishing a nonfiction book with, with an emphasis on writing your story and guide you in developing your outline and doing the right thing. 26 week writing journal will give you opportunities to stretch your writing muscles. I encourage you to play this video again and let the concept sink deeply into your spirit. For information about how to host a book birth workshop at your church or organization and about the whole writer's editing and publishing service, service packages, visit us at www.beholdwriters.org. You can purchase Behold Ye Writers for the Lord and Doing the Right Thing when you visit www.beholdwriters.org and click on Online Bookstore. Remember to visit www.therightwomenbookfest.org hashtag TWWBF2020 and tag at sign The Right Women Book Fest. Thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you soon.